No, if you had time to read my email, trying to paint my Civic in the cold, uh, run the heaters and then paint, then ventilate. Sound right. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I'm pretty sure. I think I got your email. Maybe I didn't reply because I maybe I left it open. I didn't reply, but I did get your email. Um, yes, definitely run the heaters in your garage. Uh, if you can keep them going, you can keep them going. Um, paint is not flammable to where if you have some sort of heaters in your garage, I mean, it's not going to blow up. Nothing's, you know, it's not flammable. Like it's not going to ignite uh, through a little spark. Okay. Paint is not that flammable. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But yes, you want to get the room to, you know, a good... 75 if you can you know uh to paint in um you might even want to keep your paint in there you know have your paint warm you don't want you know 40 degree paint i'm not sure where you are you're in delaware yeah i'm not sure what the what the temperatures are out there right now but um you know warmer the better sanding primer before painting uh actually none of them i wouldn't use any scotch bright pads um sanding before painting unless you're going to be use spraying undercoat so scotch bright pads don't have an even scratch surface so like some some you know some of the bristles in there the way they make it are fine some of them are coarser and if you use scotch bright you're going to get like deep scratches in some areas and it's just not the best go with a regular sandpaper uh, go with a, a 400 grit sandpaper uh, to finish off your primer um, either your, what are you using? Etching primer, either you're using etching primer, epoxy primer, uh, or a 2K filler primer. You always want to use a good, um, sandpaper. Okay. Um, it might be a little tricky to get in the little cracks and crevices, but if you're using a soft sandpaper, you could get in there. I like to use Kovacs. Um, they have sandpapers that are really soft and you could just kind of get in there and, and do your sanding. But as far as scotch bright. I mean, you could use it if you're shooting single stage enamel because it's a thick paint and it'll cover deep scratches, no problem. Um, but base coat, clear coat, if you want to chance it, you can. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, but if you would, if you do do it, use the maroon pad. It's finer than the green pad. Okay, green pad is coarse. Maroon pad is finer. So if you want to do that, then do it. Again, and I'm not a big fan of using Scotch Bright unless I'm doing a thick paint um, or an undercoating coverage, um, and I just want to scratch the surface and you know get it prepped up quick. Then I'll I'll use it. But for regular paint jobs, I don't use it. Grams of Chameleon Pearl per gallons of paint for a pulp paint job, Colorado extended cap. It depends on how much chameleon look you want. So you could put anywhere from 30 grams to 90 grams in that area, you know, it really depends. Um, for me, in a gallon, I would use about three ounces of pearl. So that's, I think it's about, I think, let me see, let me double check. Let me see, let me see, let me see the baggie here exactly how many grams this pearl is here. Uh, okay. So three ounces is basically 85 grams of pearl. So you could use up to three ounces, which is 85 grams for a gallon. That's a lot of pearl. Um, so, or you can use half, maybe 40 grams, give or take, would still give you a good look in a gallon. So, I mean, you know, you just got to test it out, figure out. I like to have less, less than more because you can always add extra clear coat. If you're mixing it in clear coat, you can always add extra clear coat uh, to overlap the pearl and make it darker. You know, if you're using an inner coat, or if you're going to mix it straight into the base, you're going to need a lot more.
No, uh, with inner coat, not that much. It's kind of like adding it to clear coat. So hopefully um, that helps. Um, it's been in the 50s in the morning when I've been spraying primer. Just try to heat the car up first. Should I be running fans blowing across the car when running my exhaust fans after spraying? Uh, I wouldn't have any fans blowing across the car. I would just have a section where you have some intake, clean air coming in and exhaust and your exhaust. That should just have enough airflow to just clear your booth out or your garage out. And it's what I do here. Um, I'll close my garage there. I have a little intake in my, in my door there. And actually it's not enough. I need to make another one, but I usually just crack the door open. But here's my intake in my door. And then I got my exhaust fan right there which just clears out this whole shop, Clear, clears it out really well. Uh, um, Pierce says, what do you use on a hood that's aluminum that has a dent, but when you try to use a stud gun, it doesn't stick. So um, you could get aluminum. Well, there are aluminum uh, stud welders that you can use, but if you can get in back of it and tap it out with a pry bar or get back there with a hammer, it's probably the only way to do it. So I would see if you can somehow get on the back of the hood and pry it out with a screwdriver or whatever, um, get back there and do it. Because I know like when I was working on my 300ZX Nissan, Back in the day, like I had a couple of dents, I just had to pry out from the back. You know, I, my stud welder, it doesn't obviously stick to aluminum. Okay, I bought a compressor, Craftsman. It doesn't come with a regulator. How do you install it at the tank or 10 feet away? What is the best way to do it? So, um, Mayan, I have a, just go to, go to my blog. Hold on. Learn autobodyandpaint.com forward slash blog. Hold on. And then we'll just type in air compressor. And so just check this page out here. Okay. Type in the search bar at the top right. Dude, we have over a thousand pages of content. So check out. Check those pages out. Peace out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Um